Well, hey everyone, welcome back to the cabin. If you've been following my channel for a while, you've heard me speak on numerous occasions about the method that I use for insulating my cabin floors. Now that I've started this Q&A series, I've had a lot of questions come in about my installation procedure. Lots of questions about this wonder foil here. <laughs> That's what I call it because I use it for so many different things. It's amazing stuff. But instead of taking up an entire Q&A episode talking about bubble foil, I decided to put this short video together. I'll answer all the questions that have come in. And then if more questions come in, I can just point them right to this video and they can get all their answers that way. Now before I get started telling you how I learned about using bubble foil to insulate my floor with, let's rewind a bit further into the past. See, I built my first cabin when I was in my late teens, and at the time, I put fiberglass insulation between the floor joist. It didn't take long before the rodents found their way into it, and they ruined it. They chewed it all up, made nest in it. The paper back insulation would just absorb moisture. It all fell to the ground. It was just a waste of time and money. When I built my second place, now all of my places have been out in the woods, built up on piers. You build a cabin out in the woods, you're going to have all the rodents in the neighborhood flock to your place, okay? So when I built my second place, even though I had that skirted, I insulated it with fiberglass insulation again, and then I put up some heavy plastic beneath it to keep the moisture out. Did the best I could to keep the rodents out, but I failed at that. They still found their way in. The fiberglass just turned into a nice haven for them. Had a repeat scenario of the first cabin. Then when I built the next place, again, it's on piers, it's out in the woods. I was going to use styrofoam insulation, but I found some fiberglass at a super bargain. It was a clearance sale, some place going out of business. I bought the fiberglass. I put it up with the intention of putting up hardware cloth and maintaining a bunch of mouse traps underneath. Well, not everything goes according to plan. Once again, the rodents ruined all the insulation. It all fell to the ground. I wasted my money again. I said I'd never, ever do that ever again, and I haven't. At the time, um, I was going to build a shed, but there's a place not far from my house that was they built and sold sheds, and they were really affordable, and I could have a shed all finished, delivered for not much more money than it would cost me for the materials. So I went that route, and I had asked them at the time if they would raise the door up about two inches instead of having it right on the subfloor. And they asked me why, and I said what I was planning on doing was ripping some inch and a half by inch and a half stock and then nailing it to the plywood floor, nailing that down into the floor joist beneath it, then putting some inch and a half styrofoam between those strips, putting another plywood floor on top of it, that way I could insulate the floor because I was intending on heating the building and the rodents wouldn't be able to get in there. And it sounded like a good plan. And they said, that, well, we, we offer the sheds with an insulated floor. So I asked, you know, what they used. And they told me that they used this bubble foil. When they showed me a piece of this, I was as skeptical as you are. I'm like, what is that going to do for me? They spoke very highly of it, they talked me into it, and then I figured, well, if it doesn't perform like I want, I will still do what I was originally planning. I was heating the building, but uh, I was doing it with my wood stove, and I, I would go out in the morning and kneel on the floor to kindle the fire, and when I was doing that, I noticed there wasn't any temperature change from up at head height to down near the floor. Every other place I've ever had, you kneel down at the floor and you feel that cold air seeping through the floor. I was amazed, totally amazed, that this little 
thin layer of bubble foil, it's bubble wrap, was performing so well. So then when I built my cabin in New York, I, did, I followed the same procedure. I sandwiched this between the subfloor, between the floor joist and the subfloor. Outstanding results. One question that comes in all the time, people want to give the bubble foil a try. Their cabin or their shed has already been built. And they asked if it would be okay if they could staple the bubble foil down on top of the plywood floor that they have now and then put another layer of plywood on top of it. I think it would be okay, but I would be afraid that over time, the pressure of people walking around and whatever you have inside that building would eventually squash and deflate the bubbles in your bubble foil and that would rob it of its insulating properties because it's the trapped air that is the insulating property of the bubble foil. So for that application, what I would do, wherever your floor is nailed to your floor joist, I would mark on the wall, the lower part of the wall, where every one of those floor joists come across. Then I would staple down my bubble foil. I would rip some strips of wood about a half inch thick by inch and a half inch wide. I'm just using these little pieces of shingle as an example. Then I would set those down and tack them through the bubble foil into the floor joist below. Then I would put the new plywood down on top of that and nail this home right through the strips, right through your existing floor and into the floor joist below. You wouldn't be deflating the bubbles, plus this trapped air will give you even more insulation. I think you'd get really good performance out of it that way. Now right out here, right outside the skirting, the ground is as hard as concrete, and right in here, Soft as dirt. Look at that. Okay, and then on the inside of the skirting, I just have one layer of bubble foil. I've got it stapled to the studding of the skirting, and there's a three and a half inch air gap between the actual skirt board and the bubble foil. And that's all I have under here. And my traps don't freeze, nothing. See, I have a, a jug of water under here just to use as a gauge, and I have it on the floor, on the ground there. That's going to be the coldest spot, and as you can see, it's not frozen. The dirt under here is, is soft. See? See that? Pretty amazing, isn't it? Now, in my other cabins, I laid the bubble foil over the top of the floor joist and sandwiched it between the subfloor and the joist, and that worked out perfect. This cabin here was originally built in the 1950s, so obviously I didn't have that option. I considered running the bubble foil underneath the joist like this, and it might have worked really good, but I was kind of concerned that this would become a warm cavity, and then if mice and other rodents, chipmunks and whatnot, got up in here, they'd have a warm cavity to build nests. They'd have to haul in the nesting material, of course, but I thought that it might be a good attractor for them. And on the other cabins, this stuff was right against the underside of the floor. So we decided to go this route. We ripped strips and stapled it to the underside of the floor and to the floor joist. It was really labor intensive. This cabin's 24 by 24. We're crawling around on our backs doing it. It wasn't any fun at all. <laughs> but we did it that way, and it made a big difference. The floor stays nice and warm. It worked out great, but it didn't perform as good as the first method where we just laid out a continuous layer, a big sheet of it all across the bottom, and then put the subfloor on top of that, and that worked out fantastic. So this worked out really good. 
The mice aren't going to bother it. There's no attractor here for them. There's no airspace above it. They don't want to chew on it. It's going to remain just like this forever. But when we did this, it made a big difference. And then here, stapled up the bubble foil on the inside of the skirting. That made a night and day difference. So even when it was 27 below zero outside, snowing and blowing, no cold air seeping through the floor, walk around barefoot, just fantastic. The best part about it is I never have to worry about the insulation. I will never have to replace this. Put it up one time, the rodents aren't gonna bother it, it's not absorbing moisture, it's not gonna fall down, it's there to stay. Did the job one time, it performs outstanding, and I'll never have to touch it again. And to me, my friends, <laughs> that is just good backwoods logic. Yes, sir. Well, I hope you enjoyed the video. And if you did and you'd like to see more of the cabin life, please click the subscribe button so that you can follow along with future updates. All the best to you, and God bless.